guys. Ah, I missed you last week. Uh, how are you doing? How is your Tuesday? I'm already seeing people in the chat. I'm so excited. Now, if you have never been to one of my weekly lives, this is how they will roll. All right. So I start by talking about what tutorial I'm going to be going over this week. Maybe go over the materials that I'm using show off the project a little bit. That way, if anybody comes back to this live or this video after it's been posted, they can get the gist of all that amazing information right off the bat. And then as soon as I'm done talking about all that good stuff, we go into the live Q&A session where I get to answer your questions to the best of my ability, especially since I don't have a whole lot of resources at my fingertips right off the bat. So if I have to come back to you with an answer, I will, but I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. Welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're able to make it here tonight on a Tuesday evening. I did. I missed you. I missed you last week. My kids, I didn't get to do a, a live Q and a last week because my kids had a parent night and both of them were a part of something going on at the parent night. So I was definitely unable to make it last week, but I'm here and I'm able to answer your questions and talk about this tutorial. Now this live will only last an hour. So at 8 PM, if you still had a question or something, uh, don't fret, just save it for the next uh, live. I'm going to, I am going to go live every single Tuesday to the best of my ability, unless something comes up. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're going to cut this off at eight. So let me go ahead and get started now. That way I can try to fit in everything that I have to fit in this evening. All right. So little heads up, my mystery box giveaway number 12 went live today. Did you know that? <laughs> have you seen it? Did you enter yet? Have you entered already? Yes. So after this live, make sure you go onto my channel and enter into mystery box giveaway number 12. I can't believe I've already been doing that for a year now. Wow. This is the 12th box, 12th month. Cause I do one a month. That is insane. That is so crazy, but I feel so excited that it's managed to keep going that long, 12 months, 12th box. It's going to be an awesome box. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, also I've been getting a lot of people asking if I'm going to be restocking my kit boxes for the baskets. And I finally got inventory in it's Interesting, the behind the scenes that people don't see when it comes to filling boxes and stocking, but I finally got more materials and I can start restocking kit boxes for the boho basket towards the end of this week or next week. Just keep looking on my website to see if I've updated the inventory list, okay? So I know I've had a lot of people asking about that and it's finally available. Just keep checking the website, crochetwithtiffany.com. Okay, so let's talk about this week's tutorial, shall we? <laughs> All right, so this week's tutorial is this gorgeous blanket, and I'm calling it the White Truffle Throw Blanket. And, oh, it's it was so much fun to make. I am so excited to show you guys how to make this, this blanket. So let me see if I can get a little closer, show you the inner pattern right there uh the border the border is very loopy that's one side get the other side a little bit cool let me know if you need any other like zoom in now, well, I want to take a second to introduce my moderator, Hannah. Hannah is my lifesaver. So if you get a comment or somebody responds to you and their name is Hannah, that is my personal moderator. She's on here in the chat helping me out while I'm focused right here. And then she shoots me text messages if any questions arise or come up because I'm not focused on the chat right now. I'm more so focused here going over the projects and everything. So Hannah is incredible. She's absolutely amazing. Everybody say hi to Hannah. <laughs> And if she talks to you in the chat, she's she's there speaking for me. Okay. So she if you have any questions at all in regards to seeing this image, just uh know if uh she pops in, she's got you, she's got you covered. She's awesome. Okay, so this blanket, I'm calling it the 
white truffle throw blanket, mainly because that's the name of the yarn is a white truffle yarn. And I think I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into, no, I'm not. Before I talk about the materials, I do want to say that this, I'm labeling it an intermediate level crochet pattern because of what we have to do to create the stitches. I think an absolute beginner might find this a little too challenging. Now, if you're an advanced beginner, you know your stitches. I think you could give this a shot, especially with how I teach it in the tutorial. If you slow down the video, um, that, that might help you even more. Did you know that you can slow down the videos on YouTube? Like you can slow down your own videos. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. So if you go on YouTube and you're watching a video on the bottom corner, there's a little gear or settings. If you push settings and playback speed, you can slow down or speed up a video. So it might start looking like it's in slow motion but it slows it down for you if something's going too fast. So a little extra tidbit right there for you. So yes, intermediate level here. And then when it comes to, here, I'm going to show you this. The border, it's like a giant fan. <laughs> And so just knowing how we get through like the between the fans, that might just be a little tricky for an absolute beginner, maybe a little tricky for an advanced beginner, but you intermediates, you'll have this, you'll be fine. All right, so now that I've conquered that, Let's go over what materials I used to make it. That way, if you're interested in using exactly what I did and you wanna just be prepped and ready before the tutorial goes live on Friday, you are you should be good. Um, let's go over. So the yarn that I, I used for this project was Karen Cakes. The yarn color. Let's see if you can see it. It's a little blurry, but it's white truffle. So white truffle. It is a size four weight yarn, worsted medium, Aran 10, 12 ply or 8 WPI, depending on where you live in the world. Now this yarn is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. So if you have a wool allergy, I just want to throw that out there right off the bat for you. And you can substitute this yarn out for something different if you would like. Uh, let me get this real close. Now I would compare that yarn to like a... I love this yarn or a red heart with love. Um, there's so many different yarns out there right now. I used to have it down and now they keep adding more and I feel like I'm missing some possible substitutions. But if you kind of get an idea of the fibers here or if you, know, you don't wanna work with anything wool, then just something size four weight that isn't too shiny, it's not too slick. Uh, has a little bit of some texture to it, I guess, slightly. But if you know what I mean, just something not too slick. You should be fine, a size four. All right, so in the chart that I'm gonna, or in the video, I'm gonna provide a quick chart. I did a workup on multiple blanket sizes and I did a whole bunch of math. I did a whole bunch of math. I worked up a swatch and I came up with, um, I'm going to have a list of multiple different blanket options, then their, their dimensions for that blanket option. And then I have uh, the number of chains that you will need to meet that dimension in your foundation row. And then the number of rows that you will need to meet dimension for the length of that blanket. And at the very end, I figured out uh, an approximate amount of yards you will need of yarn to complete that blanket. Now I say approximate because people's crochet tensions are different, right? And that's where it can be a little tricky um, talking about amounts of yarn, right? Because somebody might crochet so much tighter than I do, and then they won't need quite as much yarn to accomplish the project, or they crochet a whole lot looser than I do, and they will need a little bit more. However, I think that this approximate amount of yarn should put you right in the ballpark of what you need to accomplish that blanket. And I did do uh, a full yardage amount opposed to you need five skeins of this. That way you can 
choose whatever type or brand of yarn that you want to use and then just go off of the amount number. So I think that that'll be very helpful. I know a lot of people ask for that. Um, so I'll come back. I'll circle back to that chart. That will be in the pattern for this blanket. And I will flash the, the chart on the video on Friday's tutorial too. So that way people can have that there as well. Okay. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. You know when you lose your crochet hook and then all of a sudden you can't find it even though it's right in front of your face? That just happened to me. <laughs> all right, so the that I'm using to make this blanket is the H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. And I will mention this in the video, but I'm gonna mention this right now too, just in case anybody has any questions. Um, I highly recommend that for this particular crochet stitch, that the crochet hook you use has a really long shaft, which is this section of the crochet hook between the throat, the claw. I'm gonna go over all this in another video where I talk about crochet hooks. So that's the anatomy of a crochet hook. But the shaft of the crochet hook is between the thumb hold and the, the throat or the lip, that claw part right there. So that part in the middle is a shaft. I, I highly recommend that you, you use a crochet hook with a longer shaft. There are some crochet hooks out there that have a shorter shaft and then it bubbles out for the, the handle. And I think if you have the shorter shaft, you might run into some challenges with the stitch because for this stitch in particular, there is a row a couple rows that we use where they are, there will be 10 loops on your crochet hook at one time. So if you can imagine 10 loops on your crochet hook at one time, it's going to get crowded. So having a little bit more room for it to slide down will be helpful. And so I'm just going to say that if you don't like these types of hooks, if you prefer the types of hooks that have the ergonomic or the, the bubble up right there in the middle of the shaft, then you, you use what you got, right? I'm just gonna let you know that that'll happen where there are 10 loops on your crochet hook and just be prepared for it. <laughs> okay, so let's come back to the chart that I talked about. So in this chart, when I'm talking about the number of chains for your foundation row and the number of rows and the amount of yarn, now all of that math was based on using a size four weight yarn, and a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. If you want to use any other sized yarn or any other sized crochet hook, that chart won't be exact. It won't, it won't be right. Okay. It's because if you have a different size crochet hook, your stitches will be larger or smaller. If you have a different size yarn, your stitches will be larger or smaller. So just keep in mind the chart that I made only really works if you're using the same size crochet hook and the same size yarn that I did. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that was completely transparent. Okay, so of course you're gonna need scissors. I mean, you're always gonna need scissors. These are my pretty scissors. I splurged and bought myself some, some pretty scissors. I was like, yay, Amazon, eight bucks. Eight bucks, not eight and change, so like nine bucks. I was like, pretty scissors, nine bucks. Um, yarn needle, tapestry needle. Gonna need that purely just to weave in your ends at the end of the project. A tape measure just to make sure you're staying on measurement dimension track. You're only really gonna need that to make sure, oh, my width is right. Oh, my length is right. That's really all you need the measuring tape for. But this is muy importante, super, super important, okay? Stitch marker, or if you don't wanna get a stitch marker, having a scrap piece of yarn on hand or having a safety pin or a paper clip, you're going to want to have some kind of stitch marker thingy, whatever you got on hand for your project, for row one, basically. It's mainly for row one of, of the blanket. And the reason why I say that is because right on row one, we're working on top of the foundation row chain we're making stitches that are a nine double crochet fan or shell stitch. So nine double crochet stitches are going into one chain for row one. And then you have to skip three chains. Well, 
what happens when you're working nine double crochet stitches in the same chain is that chain, it expands, it grows because you're stretching it out. You're putting a lot of stitches into that one chain. And what ends up happening is it presses into the next chain over and that next chain over will shrink and literally disappear. So when you go to count three, skip three chains, one, two, three, it's very, very easy to, to miscount and skip that one chain right next to the nine double crochet chain because it disappeared. So we need to have some way of placing a stitch marker or that scrap piece of yarn or a safety pin or something in that chain right next to this, the chain that we put the nine double crochets in. That way we can see, oh, that doesn't look like a chain, but that's a chain. And I need to make sure I count that as my first skipped chain. Then I go one, two, three, and then continue the pattern. And I go over that in the tutorial. I really try to make sure that it's very clear and easy to follow as I'm working through that with you, just because it could really be a huge headache, especially if you're making a larger blanket and you get to the end of row one and you're like, I'm off count. Why am I off count? And then you have so much to undo and it's just really annoying. And I'm trying to save that save you from being annoyed. <laughs> so stitch markers or some way to mark a stitch. Okay. So that is everything that you're going to need to make this beautiful blanket. Again, this, this project, it's a, it's a four row repeat. It keeps you, it's, it's not one where you have to stay completely engaged where it's like you're constantly counting and you have to super hyper focus on the project which can be exhausting but it's not boring either it's not one where you get like a quarter of the way in and you're bored and you have to put it away no this this blanket was so much fun to make i whipped this up super fast just because it was so engaging and it was so much fun watching it grow and seeing how the stitch worked up and then to add the this really fun border the whole thing was fun it was it was a great time and i really can't wait to share it with you how to make it okay so Anything else I wanted to mention before I moved on? No, that was it. So this is Friday's tutorial. Then I have mystery box giveaway going on this week. So it's a busy week. It's a big week. And yeah, I think, I think that's all I got going on this week. <laughs> Just kind of giving you a heads up on what's happening this week. All right. So now we can move on to the Q&A session. And I think we have a great amount of time to get through a lot of questions. We have 40 minutes still, which is awesome. Because like I said, right at eight o'clock, I'm going to sh cut off all questions and we can keep those or save on, hold on to those until next week. So I do want to mention, I have two questions here that I got that uh, I received either on Instagram or from the community tab on my YouTube channel. I only saved two of them. So if I don't, if I missed your question, just make sure you re-ask it for me, please. Um, I lost some information, some data in the process of cleaning some stuff out, which was a bummer. It happens. All right. So first question is Darlene. She asked, what is the third loop of a stitch? Darlene is working up a pattern and she, the pattern calls for working in the third loop of a stitch. Now I can totally understand how that can be super confusing. So let me help you out or let me see if I can use, if my camera will allow me to show you. Okay. So I worked up just this little tiny single crochet square here so I could show you. And then I'm going to grab my yarn needle so I can point it out. Okay. So we know get that out of the way. So we know the top of our stitches, those V stitches, right? Got the front loop and the back loop. But if you keep turning it, so here's the front, there's our V stitches. If we keep turning it, that's our third loop right there. That's our third loop right there. That's our third loop right there. Okay. So again, front of our work, 
V stitches on the top. So got front loop, front loop, back loop. Keep turning up oh, right there. That's our third loop. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. How'd that work? Let me know. I'm looking at you chat. What did that make sense? Were you able to see that? Okay. I want to make sure I was clear with that. Yes. Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm just like staring at the chat. Like, is anyone going to say anything? Okay. So next question I have here written down ahead of time was uh, from my community tab. The question was, do yarn bowls really work? And the answer I'm going to say is yes. Yarn bowls work really well. Um, as long as you don't like vigorously yank the yarn and like toss or <laughs> launch the yarn ball out of the bowl. Um, but I have a yarn bowl right here. I want to collect yarn bowls. Like I, I think yarn bowls are absolutely beautiful. I, I think I want to start collecting yarn bowls. <laughs> so this one, I accidentally broke the top. So don't look at the top too much. But so it's a deep bowl. I also love pottery. I think pottery is just beautiful. So deep bowl. Yarn bowls work best if you roll the yarn first, so it's a ball, and then it sits in here, but it can also work great with a cake. Cake. Okay, so if it's a ball, It'll roll if it's a cake. And then it stays there and then you center pull. So either one, I prefer to either roll or cake my yarn before I work with it. That way I can eliminate any really annoying tangles or knots that are inside the skein. That way when I'm working on my project, it's a smooth process instead of having to pause, stop and work out a major knot in the project and then spend 30 minutes working on the knot when you wanted to crochet. And instead of it being relaxing, it ended up being extremely annoying. Notice I've been there a time or two. Have you been there a time or two? Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever had that happen where you wanted to have this nice relaxing experience with crochet and then all of a sudden a knot keeps your attention for like 30 minutes? Oh, it's awful. Okay. So... But the thing is, is the yarn bowl, the yarn bowl, it doesn't, it doesn't really work with like a skein. Like sure, it's something to sit it in, but I think the point, the point of a yarn bowl is that while you're working with it, and pulling it and working and pulling and working. It's staying put opposed to scoot you down. It being on the on a table and you pull and then you have to keep moving it. And then you pull up, oh, it fell off, it fell on the floor. I have to go grab it. You pull and it's just moving around. And that can be super, super annoying to just keep your yarn bowl ball from going all over the place. So the bowl keeps it in handy. And then the lid really helps because if you put the lid on, then the lid keeps it contained so the ball doesn't fit outside of the hole. Or you can just have the yarn notch in the little notch there. And it just keeps it in place. So I think they come in handy like beautifully. I love, love, love working with yarn bowls. Especially um, for all sorts of different, even if you want to do that, you just pull. So, anyways, yeah. But like I said, if you're if you have the yarn in a bowl and you yank, and the whole thing just kind of like 
jumps out of the bowl, then yeah, that, that won't work. You have to just pull at a consistent kind of rhythmic pattern, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right. So those are the 